Shalom, let's show Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shalom, let's show Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shalom, let's show
Good evening, Shabbat Shalom, and welcome to our 53rd virtual Shabbat service, or as I like to think of it, season two, episode one. We're about eight days away from the Passover holiday, and this will be a brighter holiday than last year because we're going into brighter times, leaving the darker times behind. Well, this past Wednesday, we talked about freedom in my Tachlis class. It was fascinating, and I think it's something you could bring up at your Seder to talk about not just the four freedoms that were discussed during World War II, but what does freedom mean to you? I encourage you all to bring up a discussion about what it now means to all of us. So remember, wash your hands. It's not over yet. Wear a mask, get vaccinated when you can, and check in on family. If there's anything I can do, please give me a call. Look forward to seeing you this summer during healthy times, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. This week, as we light the Shabbat candles, let us think about what the real meaning of the prayer is as we light the candles. It becomes so automatic, but let's think about how we separate the busyness of the work week and the specialness of Shabbat. As we light the Shabbat candles, take the automaticity out of the prayer and make it really meaningful to yourself. Please join me with Cantor Michelle as we light the Shabbat candles together. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha. Shanu Bamitz Votav Vetsivanu Lehad Ligner Lehad Ligner Shel Shabbat. May this truly be a Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. This space we share on the Shabbat Eve, may we never forget the holiness of Makon, this place, because it is here that we gather together in a Beit Tefillah, a house of worship. This space we share on this Shabbat Eve, may we never forget the lessons learned in this place, because it is here that we gather together in Beit Mizrash, a house of study. This space we share on the Shabbat Eve, may we never forget the friendships within Makon, this place, because it is here that we gather together in a B'nai Knesset, a house of meeting. This space we share on this Shabbat Eve, may our doors always be open to the lonely that hunger for love and greet them with a welcoming Shabbat Shalom. 
This space we share on the Shabbat Eve, may we always be aware that all faiths share Makom, this place, and there is holiness in their worship as in ours. May this space we share on this Shabbat Eve always be a place where music inspires our souls and warms our hearts. We continue now with the singing of Shalom Aleichem, Peace Be Unto You. The poem was written by the Kabbalists, Jewish mystics of Svat in the late 16th century. According to the Talmud, the song signals the arrival of Shabbat, welcoming angels who accompany a person home on the eve of the Sabbath. As we continue, Shalom Aleichem. Lachun Aranana comes from Psalm 95, and this psalm was composed by David. It's a song according to legend that has references to the time the Israelites wandered through the wilderness. As the cantor continues, Lachun Aranana.
As the sun sets slowly behind the mountains of Vale, we gather together, appreciative of the many gifts we enjoy. On this Shabbat, amidst the peacefulness of these surroundings, let us no longer focus on that which we desire, but rather upon what we already savor, the quietness of the creek and the soft mountain air. We thank you each day for health of body, mind, and spirit. Let our daily actions reflect our gratefulness of our lives every moment with every breath. As we recite our prayers surrounded by family and friends, let us joyfully lift our voices in song, grateful to God who has given us the blessing of Shabbat. Amen. A medieval rabbi, Leon Modena, explained the meaning behind the Baruch Hu prayer this way. He said, imagine a man in a boat who's pulling himself to shore. If one did not know better, it would appear that he's pulling the shore to himself. But indeed, it is the one in the boat who's being moved because the shore is fixed. So it is with prayer. When we recite the Baruch Hu, we think that when we pray, we're moving God closer to our will. But true prayer does quite the opposite. The Baruch Hu moves us closer to God as the cantor continues with our call to worship. During these difficult days, we all can use a prayer like Ahavat Olam. It reminds us that God is with us in good times and in bad. Well, the author of the prayer took the words of Moses and Joshua, made what was said 3,000 years ago relevant today. When there is darkness, we pray that God provides protection until the sun rises in the morning. Our rabbi said Ahavat Olam is to be sung as gently as rain on new plant growth and as lightly as dew falling on grass. The cantor continues with the singing, Ahavat Olam. Yeah. 
now continue with the most ancient and important prayer found within Judaism as all of us join together in singing the Shema. Shirat Hayam, the Song of the Sea, contains the poem Micha Mocha, which was sung by the Israelites after their crossing of the Red Sea in safety and celebrates the destruction of the Egyptian army during the crossing as they look forward to arriving into the Promised Land. Well, many consider this prayer to be one of the oldest surviving texts found in the book of Exodus as the cantor continues, Micha Mocha. In the prayer of Hashamru, we recite the biblical command to guard the Sabbath. For in six days the Lord created the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he ceased from his work and rested. The great Zionist thinker Achat Am, the founder of cultural Zionism, saw Israel as a spiritual center, a Jewish state, and not merely a state of Jews. Achat Am said, more than Israel has kept the Sabbath, the Sabbath has kept Israel. As we join in prayer every Friday night, let Shabbat continue to keep us together as a family. And we continue with the cantor of the Shamru. <laughs> I 
The Birkat HaGomel prayer expresses gratitude for the miracle of healing and the full restoration of one's health to family and friends, and indeed, full restoration to life itself. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, HaGomel Lechayavim Tovot, Sheg Gimalani Kol Tov. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who bestows kindness upon each of us and has bestowed goodness upon me. May God, who has bestowed kindness upon us, continue to bestow every goodness upon each of us forever. Well, there are those in our community who are in need of healing, body, mind, and spirit. We'll take a moment now. As the cantor continues with the singing, Misha Berach. Eternal God, we turn to you seeking comfort, faith, and hope. Bless all of those who put themselves at risk to care for the sick. Send strength and courage to the doctors and nurses and support staff in the front lines of this battle. Bless the medical scientists and researchers with insight and skill, dedication and fortitude who are working day and night across the world to offer healing treatments and distribute the vaccine quickly. Bless the sacred work of their hands. May this plague pass from among us speedily. Help us, O God, to see that we are one world, one people. And bless especially all those who are in need of healing. Send us health, O God. Watch over us and hear our prayer. Amen. Be not afraid of silence. It is more powerful than the unpolished word. It allows God's voice to be heard. It allows tears and doubt to tumble out. Be there with quiet compassion that flows from the depths of your being through your eyes, your touch, your sighs into your very soul. Be not afraid of silence as the cantor continues Adonai Svatai. Adonai Svatai Tivtach Ufi agitehilatecha Adonai sefatai tiftach Ufi agitehilatecha
Lehu v'naale el har Adonai. Many people shall go and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And God will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. Well, the melody for the prayer Shalom Rav, which means abundant peace, was composed by cantor Jeff Klepper and Rabbi Dan Friedlander in Boston, Massachusetts. This is written in the midst of the Yom Kippur War, late 1973, and in an interview, they said they put their heart and soul into the song, Shalom Rav. May you be granted with abundant peace to your people Israel forever. And then, like peace, they allowed it to fly free. We continue now with our prayer for peace. Shalom Rav. Take a moment now for a thought and a prayer. I finally got around to watch a series on Netflix. It's called The Crown. It's the story of how Queen Elizabeth II became Queen of England. The story takes place in the early 1950s, not that long ago, that many would refer to as, well, the good old days. But what struck me while watching the drama were the habits that have changed so dramatically in the past 70 short years. So is it just me? Or did everyone smoke cigarettes back then? Was the mere word of cancer always said with a whisper? Were there no health concerns in keeping the kitchen clean? So the series made me reminisce about, well, the good old days. Now I know many of you weren't born yet or are too young to remember, but this is a good story. Go back just 50 years, though we have not been wandering like Moses or the Israelites for 40 years in the Sinai Desert, but 50 years. You were in a minority if you cared about clean air, water, and it was common that raw sewage was being dumped into the local rivers. Back then, in the good old days, if you were elderly, senior citizens were the poorest age group in the nation. 
if you were sick. Well, most heart surgeries or cancer treatments, even hip and knee replacements, it was a thing of the future. If you wanted to be healthy, smoking was commonplace with doctors in white lab coats promoting the benefits of smoking cigarettes and it was yet to be officially declared as causing cancer. Well, if you wanted a long life, the lifespan of the average American was a full decade shorter, a decade shorter than today. So much for nostalgia for simpler times. The good old days, a return to those thrilling days of yesteryear. Now, if you were to go back, let's say around 2,500 years ago, the common theme amongst the children of Israel, a wandering wilderness generation, was simply put, the past. The past was better than the present. Now see it for a moment through their eyes. After spending 400 years in slavery in Egypt, they were recently freed, trying to adjust to the uncertainty of freedom, Still from the very moment of their redemption at the parting of the Red Sea, the Israelites yearned for clarity of the past, the good old days. For 650,000 of them who fled Egypt, there was lack of water, they wanted more varied diet, and they complained, they grumbled, and they even rebelled. Throughout it all, their mantra was constant. I want to return to the good old days. Yes, life as bad as it was, it was actually better in Egypt. Well, along the way, as with so many manipulative complainers, it turned to the melodramatic. They said, if only we had died by the hand of God in the land of Egypt. Why, Moses, why did you bring us up from Egypt just to kill us. Well, over time, kvetching turned to yearning, yearning for a return to a romanticized past. Well, there are some things that need remembering. Whatever your age, there are moments in your own life that you must remember as they were without that sugar coating. During this past year, I know each of us have longed for a return to the good old days. But as I thought about it, I also am appreciative for what this forced change in our lives has done to make me more well, grateful for my family, friends, and yes, for time. In the good old days, it was easy to be too busy to make a phone call or FaceTime a loved one or use the excuse, I'm gonna see them next month anyway. In the good old days, we could postpone having dinner with friends because, well, next week would be easier. In the good old days, we could put off cleaning out our closets and providing much needed, gently worn clothes for the thrift shop because it was easier to say, when I have more time. Well, a year has gone by and I would like to suggest that the good old days, they're today. In between your long walks, pick up the phone and make it a regular habit to call a loved one. While we can't go out for dinner with friends, we can check in with them, see how they're doing. In cleaning out my garage and closets, I discovered lost treasures that I have not seen in years, but also not needed. Now someone else can enjoy them and we can make today the good old days and someday in the future, well, we'll reminisce of how wonderful it was to sit on the couch with a glass of wine, a bowl of ice cream, and watch these Shabbat services. We're making plans to return to in-person services this summer. So in the meantime, stop the fetching, take advantage of each day, and look forward to a bright tomorrow. Dear God, remind us that some things must be remembered exactly for what they were, because memories take us back. Memories take us back, but you know, dreams take us forward. And we pray as life 
brings us tears. May life also bring us smiles and memories. The tears dry, the memories and smiles fade, but our memories, they will last forever. Amen. Tradition attributes the prayer Aleinu to words spoken by Joshua as he crossed the Jordan River and entered into the Promised Land, about to conquer the city of Jericho. Aleinu Lishabeach translated means, it is our obligation. Our obligation to praise God, va'anachnu korim, refers to bowing and kneeling. These were the ancient practices associated with the Temple in Jerusalem thousands of years ago. And it's part of our service today. As the cantor continues, Aleinu. Aleinu l'shabeach la'adon ha'kol, la'tait gidula le'otzer b'reshit, shalo asanu kigoye ha'aratzot, velo samonu k'mishpechot ha'adama, shalo sam chalkeinu kahem, v'gor aleinu k'chol hamonam, Anachnu korim, umishtachavim, umodim, lifne melech, mache hamlachim, hakadosh baruchu, venemar, vehayadonai, lemelech al kol haaretz, bayom hahu, bayom hahu, Adonai Echad Ushemo 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 Echad At this moment in memory of our loved ones who are no longer with us, we join hands in love and remembrance. A link has been broken in the chain that bound us together. Yet, strong bonds of home and love hold us one to another. Though our loved ones are beyond our sight, we do not despair, for we'll always be comforted by their precious memories. Please join with me in the mourner's Kaddish. Yitzkadal v'yitzkadash shemir rabah, v'yamad ivrach irutei v'yamlich malchutei, v'chai yechon v'yom mechon v'chai yechol beit Yisrael, Bagalav is man kariv vim ramein. Yehesh me rabba mevarach leolam o meomaya. Yitz barach vi ishtabach vi et paar vi et ramam vi et nase. Yitz hadar vi et ale vi et alal shemei de kudisha brihu. Le elam min kol birchata ve shirata. Tush birchata ve nechemata da miran bialma vim ramein. Yehesh lama rabba min shemaya. V'chayim aleinu v'yal ko Yisrael v'imromeim. Ose shalom v'imromav, hu ya'ase shalom. Aleinu v'yal ko Yisrael v'imromeim. May the sun bring each of us new energy by day, and may the moon softly restore us by night. May the rain wash away our worries, and may the fresh mountain snow give each of us strength in our being. May we walk gently with kindness through the world and know its beauty all the days of our lives. Adonai oz liamo yitain, Adonai varechet mova shalom. May the Lord grant strength into his people and bless all peoples with peace. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Please join us with Cantor Michelle in Kiddush and Motzi. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Bore Puri HaGafen. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hamotzi Lechem Min Haaretz Bete Avon. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.